Hey everyone, I'm Memo. Welcome to my channel. On this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Xterra Elite. And what I want to do today is show you how to fine tune the detector so that you can get more out of it. Stay tuned. So the Xterra Elite is very much a turn on and go detector. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so let's go through this step by step. There's three initial steps that you need to do on the detector every single time that you go out detecting with it. Number one is choose the mode that you're going to detect in. You have three to choose from, park, field, and beach. Each one of those modes has two profiles, one and two. So you have park one and two, field one and two, and beach one and two. You're going to choose the mode depending on where you're detecting and the conditions where you're detecting. And you can see on the chart here for more specific information, which each of those modes is best for. If you need to take a moment to pause the video and read through those more carefully, you can do that. You can also find them in the user guide, which is online. Number two, we're gonna do a noise cancel to eliminate EMI. Press the settings button until you see the letters AU on your screen. Then press the accept and reject button and the noise cancelling will begin. Lift the detector off of the ground while doing the noise cancelling. Number three is the all important ground balance. This can be done in three ways. Manually by pressing the plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the meter. Automatically by pumping the detector up and down until it becomes quiet. And finally, by turning on ground tracking and letting the detector adjust and compensate as you detect. Yeah, it really is that simple. You can turn it on, choose your preferred uh, mode, whether it's park, field or beach, one, two on each of those settings and just start detecting. But what if you want to get more out of it? What if you want to find those small signals, those faint targets? How can we adjust the detector just a little bit and get a bit more out of it? Well, we're going to show you. Okay, what we need to do with this detector is make certain adjustments, general adjustments, that are going to tune it in to the ground where we're detecting and that will allow us to pick out those faint targets and those small targets let me show you how we do that this is probably going to be a little different for everybody but the general principle is the same of tuning the detector into the ground where we are detecting there's going to be some trial and error involved in this, but it should be uh, reasonably easy to do if we follow a few simple steps. Again, we're going to go through three steps or settings to fine tune the detector. Sensitivity, recovery speed and iron bias. Number one is sensitivity. Now this is an easy one to tune in because we're basically going to push it as high as we can without it making a lot of noise. You want to go to your sensitivity settings, plus and minus, and basically push it up as far as you can. It's up to 25, I'm getting some chatter there. So I'm going to bring it down. When I'm in the hills, I'm usually running it on 21 or 22. Number two is recovery speed. Now, this can be a little more tricky, but it's still not complicated. Let me show you how I do it. There is a setting on the Xterra Elite, which is very important, and it is this one. The recovery speed. We have uh, 
a few options here. We have one, two, and three. Now three is the fastest, but it's gonna give you the least sensitivity. One is the slowest, and it'll probably give you more depth, but you're gonna to have to go considerably slower on your swing to detect where that target is that you're picking up. I go right in the middle, number two. Number three is iron bias. So we're still here in the recovery speed setting. And what we're gonna do is press and hold the setting button, this cog button here in the middle. And it goes to our iron filter. This iron filter goes from minus one, zero, one, up to two. If you put it on minus one, it will help you to distinguish between good targets and iron targets when they're next to each other. You'll hear the iron, which is the nail, or some other iron object, and you'll hear the high tone or the higher tone, which is the silver coin or the copper coin. It unmasks those targets that are close together. When you're using this iron filter, you have a choice to make. Do I want to hear the separation? Do I want to unmask those targets? I'm going to hear a lot more iron, but I'm also going to have the opportunity to hear the good signals. That would be your, your minus one. Or do I want to ignore the iron even if it's possible that there's a coin or something else there right by that iron signal. If I'm, if I'm going that way, I'm going with the two. And then I've got the one setting and the zero setting as kind of intermediate settings. Let me show you what I mean, how this works. So there we have a rusty nail. And if I go over that with the detector, You can hear that grunt noise and it's also giving me kind of a chirp because of the rust. Sounds better in that direction than that. Now we're going to put close to it a small silver coin. And listen what happens. That's with that iron filter on minus one. We're getting the grunt of the iron, but we're also getting the chirp of the silver coin. If I turn this way, it's even more pronounced. It's picking out that silver coin, even though it's close to the nail. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go back to the filter. I'm gonna push it up to two. And let's try again. And you're gonna hear a difference. The chirp is a lot less pronounced. It's still getting it. Still getting the silver coin. But it's having to work a lot harder to get it. Let's go back to the minus one. And it's picking it out. You can tell there's something there, as well as the nail, as well as the iron. That's what that iron filter is gonna do for you if you have it pushed right down, minus one. It really unmasks the targets that are close together the iron and the and the good stuff the the silver or the copper coin bronze coin and places where i detect i mean we find tons of nails and bullets and all kinds of stuff so you really it really works good to have that iron filter all the way down do you agree 
eating. Oh, you don't want to rock. No, 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 no. Play with your ball. Play with your ball. That's better. That's better. Okay, so we've got those settings now uh, figured out. You might have to tweak those a little bit for your area. Again, it, it's very subjective. It depends on the kind of soil. It depends on the kind of targets that you're going for. But as a general rule, this is probably going to work in uh, most areas. Now I'm just going to do one more test to help you fine tune the detector even more. Quarter real, silver coin, tiny little thing. <laughs> and I had to turn my uh, sensitivity down. I've got it on 18 because of the noise. But the rest of the settings are the same. So let's see what we get here. 52, 54, 55, very clear. And I'm picking that up very faintly at about five inches. Maybe six. So what's the significance of, of this test that I'm doing? What we want to do is try out different coins and different size coins and different metal coins um, to see what kind of a signal they give you before you go out detecting and how high you have to have the sensitivity to realistically be able to detect these coins. For instance, I found this quarter real with my Equinox detector. It was giving me an 18 signal on it and it was about five or six inches down in the dirt. Sam's Xterra Pro could not detect this coin with the settings that he had on it the day that we were out detecting. You could even carry a small coin like this with you when you go detecting. And before you actually set off, check your settings with this and make sure that you're picking it up or something similar. I would say something small like this, um, depending on where you live, it'd probably be a different coin or maybe a ring or part of a ring and make sure that you're tuned in to the ground where you're trying to detect so that you will get all these really small targets. Well, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful for you to get your detector tuned in. This works on the Xterra Elite, which is a detector that I'm currently using. Works on the Equinox detectors, which I, I have one of those, the Equinox 600. It works on the Xterra Pro, which is a detector that Sam uses when we go out detecting. And it's a really good way to make sure that you're not missing things. Well, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, a like for the video. And go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of our adventures and how-tos and reviews and so on and so on. On the channel, Finding Memo, Metal Detecting Mexico. And... We'll catch you on the next one.